Hey, class, good. Good morning. Good morning. Morning, sir. Morning, morning. Is it already visible ang PPT sa screen? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, uh, we'll start, no? So, we'll be talking about the chapter 2. And chapter 2 um, is all about the history of history of public health. Pasunlo, sa natong uba, no? So we'll be talking the prehistoric era, then from prehistoric era, um, we'll be, we'll also discuss about the, the health practices or how they, they perceive health no? during the Greek era. And then we have the um, Roman civilization down to Asian civilization to a medieval uh, period and to the current time. But since we're just, we're until, ano lang ta, uh, um, I think the, the first school who offer the, um, who offer, uh, I mean, the, the world's first medical school, no? So, until lang ta dito, which is Escola Medicana Salernitana. Salernitana, that's it. Okay, so... Let's okay. Let's start. Okay, this history of public health. The understanding of health and medicine has evolved through time. During the prehistoric era, early civilization looked at diseases from a supernatural. Uh, perspective. So in prehistoric era, diseases are coming from the supernatural perspective. So prehistoric adopted health related practices, not for health reasons, but more of religious purposes. So sa prehistoric era, they adopted as um, they adopted health related practices, dili lang sa health reasons, no? Kung dili po sa, kung dili for religious purposes. And health or disease is seen as a divine act. And shamans or these are called the quack doctors man before, no? But it was, uh, no, I, I mean, uh, Karon, presently, uh, they are actually called as quack doctors. But before, um, they are known as medicine men, no? They are natural healers of a tribe in a certain area or community. So, shamans were skilled in the use of medicinal herbs, usually gathered by most probably women in the tribe, and the use of amulets, the charms, or spells that would supposedly ward off evil spirits that would cause the illness. Even until now, guys, now uh, we are actually using this one um, sa mga bukid bukid or probinsya or sa tribe na to nga nasa community, um, usually sa mga rural areas. Okay, shaman also conduct uh, ceremonies that would appease the gods of supernatural beings and eventually revert the curse that caused the illness. And lastly, giving advice, they give advice to individuals on how to maintain an illness-free life. There are limited evidence regard, uh, regarding prehistoric health practices. However, the limited proofs have elucidated certain practices that might appear baffling to contemporary setting. Like for example, these are the prehistoric health practices that were practiced before. Um, number one is geophagy. Sorry, this is this should be geophagy, no delete geography. Geo P H A. For a while, I just um ako lang isulat dun, no? geophagy. Okay, that's a geophagy. In order for one illness to be treated or cured, someone should ingest a clay or earth, no? And this was actually practiced before. 
So some would use clay to cover wounds or cuts. Okay, number two is the priest work health practices. We have the second one, we have trepanning, no? trepanning. What is trepanning? They actually heal the, a hole, no? Sa, what do you call this one? Sa frontal area, sa skull. No? It's the draining of hole into human skull to release evil spirit dwelling within the person, causing the illness. Practice discontinued until up to the medieval period. So, nagabutang sa lag hole there is a front area sa imong skull, no? So, so that's what we call trepanning. Again, we have two prehistoric health practices. Number one, we have the geophagy and the trepanning. Geophagy, ingestion of clay or earth that was practiced as a mode of treatment of certain disease, no? And sometimes they actually use this one to cover wounds or cuts. And the other one is trepanning. Ang pagbutang og hole, there is a frontal area sa skull. To release evil spirit dwelling within the person that are uh, causing the illness. So this was actually practiced until a medieval period. Ato sa pasuglo ng uban, ha? Okay, as rights grew and organization of communities became more complex, human beings started to develop certain skills, no? So, they evolved ang mga tao. And they set um, some skills like, um, like hunting and farming. So, living together became more difficult and challenging, especially in aspects such as accessing food, na are going to, to look for food, sa nila pag food, no? sa ilang area. Sometimes if they cannot uh, hunt food in their area, they actually go to other places. That's why um, their instances nga magbulag-bulag gudya po ng pamilya, no? And then, um, let's start with the ancient civilization, ancient Egyptian civilization. So, sa in ancient or e AEC, no? Um, they re uh, during this time, Egyptian revealed the establishment of rudimentary baths and toilets in dwelling places and they gave high regard for personal cleanliness but the rationality was more of still religious gapon than medical. So, parehas gapon sa prehistoric era and ancient Egyptian civilization. But then, they were already aware of sanitation, no? Good hygiene and sanitation. Ancient um, Egyptian civilization still believe no, that their deities and spirits played a role in causation of illness and they also develop a form of writing to keep records of how certain illnesses should be treated or cured. Shaman evolved not just summoners of spirits and conduits of the gods' messages and medical device. They developed surgical skills Okay, during this time, they already developed surgical skills. And um, most of the shamans before also, no, they already invented some devices such as surgical instruments used in surgery, mga basic operations before. So Egyptians are actually famous of, for their process of mummification. If you already see this one sa mga Discovery Channel, katong mga tao before they... The, in order for them to be preserved, they do the process of mummification. No, sometimes they were covered with um with cloth, di ba? Ginatay na sa until ma di wala na yung skin na makitan. So cloth or skin are actually covered with with cloth with white cloth. No, so Egyptians um so this is actually a form of taking care of their dead or dead people. No. So let's move on to the ancient Greeks. No? After the AEC or the ancient Egyptian um, civilization, we have the ancient Greeks. So ancient Greeks or Greeks developed a form of writing and recording through which precepts and norms are codified and documented. Okay, precepts are actually um, um, a general rule in a certain community while norms is the standard rule or law in the community. 
ancient Greeks slowly digressed from the perspective of the supernatural as the cause of illness and diseases into a more rational or logical paradigm. So, ang mag, so during the Greek civilization, sila yun ang nagtudlo, no? Kung unsa yun ang, ang, ang sakit. So, they actually um, erase that the thinking of other people na already knew na ang sakit gikan yun sa, I mean, it's a divine act, no? Gikan yun sa, sa evil spirit, which is sa ilang pagtuo dili. Kung dili, the environment dija from which uh, that person belong no? so greek culture cultivated the desire of knowledge thus giving birth to prominent greek philosophers such as we have aristotle socrates this is socrates ha? socrates or socrates pythagoras and hippocrates so among them ang pinakailado dire when it comes to uh, medicine is hippocrates which is which is which is also known as the father of I mean, who is also known as the father of medicine. He contributed a lot in professionalization of medicine, divorcing it from religious rituals and supernaturals. No? So meaning to say, he separated the thought of, of medicine from religious rituals and supernaturals. Hippocrates wrote um, a book no? entitled The Ere, Aquis et Lucis, sorry, English, of air, water, and land, where he proposed the diseases developed because of our environment and not because of some form of divine act. Siya yun ang naghimoan eh, no? She, he already limit, he eliminated the thought of, or the thinking of the people before, no, sa mga prehistoric era, or even the AEC time, no? Hippocrates noted the effect of a food, we have the occupation and the climate, no? which is one of the causes ng isa ka tao makakuha o uh, disease. No? Hippocrates established what was known as the Hippocrates School of Medicine and the first one to use terms as, such as the acute. For a while, guys. Ajit lang, guys. Asanata, sorry. Yeah, I said for a while. Ah. Okay. Um, okay. Hippocrates established what is known as the Hippocratic School of Medicine. And the first one to use terms such as uh, acute, katong nasha severe ba onset and onset, um, severe and sudden in onset nga disease. No? Then while the we have the uh, chronic and we also have the endemic, epidemic, we have the paroxysms. And exacerbation. These terms actually, guys, are being used until today, no? Even at this uh, present time, ginagamit niya po niya ng mga mga terms. Okay, we have the acute, we have the the chronic, which is the persistence of disease, no? In a long period of time. Then we also have here the the endemic, no? These are regular diseases occurring in a certain area or community. Ang pandemic po, kanisha is kanang is a disease that occurs worldwide. No? Usually mga viruses kini siya. 
epidemic is also um, synonymous to a pandemic, but epidemic, um, these are infectious diseases that occurs in a community. No? Pero dili siya matawag nga worldwide compared to pandemic, which is actually shared by person to person worldwide. Uh, worldwide. Okay, we also have this one, we also have paroxysms and ex exacerbation. For a while, guys, na ito. Okay, paroxysms and exacerbation. So, exacerbation, there is an increase. Um, the add on siya. God on siya sa problema ba, no? There in exist um, additional problem to an acute disease. Parang ana ba, no? God on siya. So, we have, a, we have great concept here, no? Concept of four humors. Number one, we have phlegm. We also have blood, yellow bile, and a black bile. So, these are the four humors of, I mean, concept of four humors, no? under Greek civilization. So meaning to say guys, isa ani four humors na malakman or inadequate man or uh, there is a deficiency and then the person could could get sick, no? Pero pag balance ning upat ka buok, meaning to say healthy ang tao. So that's how they they uh, they look at it, no? The concept of four humors. Okay, let's move on to Roman uh, civilization. So during this time, they are more of preventing diseases no, than treating them or curing them. Roman doctors learned much about health and medicine through wounded warriors. No, remember to mga gladiators before? No, na sila sa ilang atong, atong morag awayanan ba? No? They, they actually have this fight i forgot the term no na sila sa katong dako bitaw nga murag football field no so roman doctors preferred more of studying living person than dissecting courses so dili man sila ga, ga study og tao they replace animals as their study tool no instead of humans so we have a a uh, we have Another um, important individual here, we have Galen, who is a Greek physician who migrated in Rome. He, he actually say, dissected monkeys during his time. And his works became foundation for the human, for the study of human anatomy. And his work or works became scientific dogma and left unchallenged even through the medieval period. Okay. So Romans believe that establishment of community sanitation contributed to the maintenance of health and prevention of spread of diseases. Roman concept of promoting community hygiene include the building of public baths, but also building of hospitals. For a while, let's get them in now. Again, the Roman concept of promoting community hygiene include a building of public uh, public baths, building of hospitals. If you take a look at the the different civilization guys no, or era, um, they're thinking about health really evolved no from prehistoric era down to the um, Asian um, the Asian Egyptian no? I'm sorry, ancient Egyptian civilization down to to Greek civilization and to the Romans down to the early Christian. No? They have different concept of disease and health. No? So early Christian monks and philosopher, philosophers preserve Roman, Romans and Greek ideologies through preservation efforts, most of which occurred within monasteries. 
Okay, during this time, the concept of sin was introduced and how illness was a consequence of sin. So, pag natay sakit, pasabot, sinner ka. In order for you to to restore your health, you have to ask forgiveness from 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 God. No? Para ka mapatawad o imong sin ma-absolve. So, that's how they... This, this, that's how um, the early Christian time, no, period or era, look at the disease, no? Kanailang ang konsepto sa disease. But murag ni balik na punta sa prehistoric era, no, sa early Christian. Because they're more of, they, they thought that um, sin is also a divine, uh, sorry, um, uh, disease is also a divine act, no? But if you're a sinner, then most, one thing for sure, you will you would get sick. In order for your health to be restored, maayo kag pasayo sa ginoo para ma-absolve imo ang sin o gumbalik imo ang health na, ay, uh, healthy condition. So, there is actually similarity with the prehistoric perspective about health. Ibalik na po ito na time, no? That's why guys, wala well, gyud na focus sa uh, early Christian nga era ang sakit ug ang health, no? Di wala sila tarong nga konsepto sa inana bitaw nga butang. That's why niabot tong time nga naanay mga plague or uh, plague and then the, one of the notorious plague in history was actually the black plague, no? And this is actually a, um a caused by your senior pestis that was act, that's actually transmitted to rodents no through flea bites so it's also known as a black death so it's one of the notorious epidemic um disease it's also called bubonic plague or uh, black death no nganong gitawag na nga black death no because during that time guys no uh, this plague actually originated in china then niabot sa europe no Uh, through what we call J, uh, Genoese trading nga barko no, nga ni to sa Europa and then they actually brought this the seafarers nga patay na and then na mga seafarers na or mga ta or seafarers nga nga grabe kay kail and then they are called uh, uh, this this plague is also called black death because na matabunan magud na siya og mga black nga mga boils no katong mga tao nga severely ill gid kayo so that's why they call it call it as a black death katong mga tao nga nasa barko nga naanay mga black boils no so bubonic plague what is bubonic plague uh, person infected with the disease would have swollen lymph nodes these are actually um the symptoms and signs and symptoms no swollen lymph glands located at the axillae growing in other femoral areas other signs and symptoms would include gangrene no katong ang gangrene guys is this is actually a blood flow going to um to a to to the tissue nga na cut off na and then from there dili na maka flow ang dugo magsigi na sila og ana betong pura na sa uh nagpundo na dito nag standby and the color of this one is sometimes bluish green no kaning gang gang green ginaputol pud ni siya kay prone man ni sa bacteria ang gang green na sakit no and then um i mean ang area is prone sa bacteria that's why magka gang green siya and then putlo na siya putlo noon kay kay mutakod ba na siya until sa mga usually sa mga extremities na siya makita ng gang green no. And then okay, include gangrene of the extremities and the person who has bubonic plague also experienced high fever. So I mean this is 40 above. No mura pod sa gatong. Unsa gitong a virus, ma'am? Dating a virus gani katong bago lang? Covid. A covid oh. Okay, it's the same with COVID, no? Uh, 40 above Japan or maybe 30 or 38 above uh, temperature. 
Then we also have um, we also have hematem messies. Okay, for hemate messies. I forgot this term, guys, but I'm familiar with the with the term. No, we use this one, and even even and even today, it's actually being used by some doctors if in, in diagnosing a, a patient. So na ako yatag tong tong definition niya, ano? Pagamang siya. Ah okay. Okay, according to na nakita na nako. Na um sa Google no, kasi uh, as I remember, this is the vomiting of of blood caused by gastritis or GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease. But usually this hematemesis no, hematemesis is before dili sa ginahatagan og og antibiotic nga tablet because some of the tablets usually the mga macrolides no, and streptomycin was one of the drug of choice of for for this for this disease but ginahatag lang ni siya sa IV dili siya tabletas kay ang streptomycin can cause gastritis which adds adds on i add on to to the disease no magsuka gyapon siya yamang ano nang tiyan yang samaran gyapon so magsuka gyapon siya dugo so um that's it but usually um during during my my uh, my stay in 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 the Middle East, no, sa hospital, um, you we usually give uh, gentamicin, no, ani. Pero ginahatagan po siya doxycycline pero IV lang pero diligid siya kaayo ginagamit ng doxycycline because doxycycline can actually also cause gastritis kana mga doxycycline, clindamycin and tetracycline. But this this these drugs are actually can also cure. Pero ginabawal na siya karoon, no? Kaneng clindamycin, we have the tetracycline and uh, what else? Tetraclinda and the doxycycline. Pero ang doxycycline sa ilang tulong, ginagamit gyapon until now, no? Kaneng gentamicin and doxycycline sa pag-treat sa hematemesis. Okay? So, one of the signs and symptoms of bubonic plague is also aching limbs and pain, no? So more hospices were built in response with the plague. Some hospices became more specialized such as leprosarias or leper houses, wherein patients suffer, suffering from leprosy would be housed or isolated and they will be separated no, from, from those people that are healthy. So kaninga time during the early Christian era, diri na ni abotong uh diri na nag nagsugod tong term na quarantine no the method of separating the lepers from those unaffected by the disease became one of the forerunners of the method of uh, quarantine no so we already know uh, quarantine no during the pandemic time this is one of the worst that we always encounter no so separate you separate the person from or you isolate the person who you think or who you thought na naasya yung morag symptomas sa anang masakit from those people that are healthy also. And then this time also, sa, sa tong sa to ang sa to ang experience before, no, nga ibutang ka sa hotel, tagaan kang pila ka days dito nga stay, so you will be quarantined, no, until your 14th day, no. And then pag wala kay sakit, ihawa na ka. Kung na kay sakit, nakit na, i-isolate, uh, ibutang ka dito sa sa area kung uh, i-isolate ka nila, no? Para tambalan ka. So, we already know this word during the pandemic time. It's a very popular and very familiar. So, during the medic Okay, let's move on to medieval period. Na, no? Sa medieval period, medical schools began to develop around Europe and Middle East, Asia. And one of the not one, but the first school of medicine or medical school is the Salerna Medical School, which is also known as Scola Medicana Salernitana. The teachers of the school use Greco-Romas medical traditions, complementing them with Arab-Jewish perspectives. 
So the point regimen sanitas, sanitates salernitatum was written by the school. The regimen emphasized personal hygiene, diet, exercise, and temperance as method to maintain health and well-being. It was the first health guide of the masses. So to summarize it all, during the medieval period, the people cultivated more of knowledge. You now they explore more knowledge about medicine. That's why this time, no, nagkaroon tayo ng Scola Medicana Salernitana, which is the world's first medical school. Okay? And then they already um, have these standards and guides on how to diagnose disease no, during this time also. So to continue this, next week, we'll be talking a lot you know, more of the current you know, practices uh, or a current concept of disease and health. And up at three pages, no? So, hello. So please study, guys, no? These are actually eight slides, or 11 slides. Um, this is already a summary of the history of public health from the prehistoric era down to the medieval time. So let's just end our topic, no? Our discussion. There is a Scola Medicana Salernitana. And then we'll continue next, um, this week, next meeting. Okay? So next meeting, we'll have a face-to-face and that will be on M. Thursday, ba? Tama ba ko Thursday? Yeah, Thursday, 10.32. Okay, let's continue discussing the history of public health. Okay, and then after that one, we have chapter three, which is one of the um, coverage for the midterm exam. No? We'll be talking about the community health, the epidemiology, and human behavior. That's chapter two and three. Okay, guys, you have any question? Wala na yung question? Ray, sabio? Sir, wala na sir. <laughs> wala na. Natulog mo? Wala sir, inamin na mi sir. Ah, okay. Okay, thank you for joining the class. Thank you for your time. And then see you on Thursday. Goodbye. Bye sir, thank you po. Bye sir, thank you sir. Bye sir.